What's going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today on the 20th of August in 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as going over some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, heading off to the rest of August and heading into the month of September. September in 2019. So if you enjoy this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see more investing, stock market, trading, and personal finance content. And let's get right into the video, guys. So right now, with about three minutes left in the market today, the S&P 500 is treading right above $2,900. It's down about 22 points today, down 0.75% as of right now. Now, if we go over here to the NASDAQ, guys, the NASDAQ is down about 0.56%, down about 44 points, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average is down about 0.64%, down a bit more than the S&P and the NASDAQ. It's down about 170 points as of right now. And if you guys watched my video yesterday, I kind of called this out, right? On the S&P in specific, if we zoom in a bit here, I know there's a bunch of craziness. I can, um, you know, pretty much show you guys right here. You can see that we were at a point in time where the S&P was almost forming a triple top. Now it's pretty much solidified that it was a triple top, especially since we're dumping here. But yesterday at the close of the market, we were seeing a bit of a resistance there, but we didn't get the full on rejection that we were waiting for in today's really session, right? In which we ended up getting. But yesterday we didn't quite get it yet. And I was talking about how if we were to get rejected here that was going to be a pretty bearish move that would be the solidification of that triple top and we may be seeing further red from there and you guys can clearly see you know if we go to the 20 day one hour chart you can see it even better right resistance at 2930 2930 resistance again yesterday we popped up a bit we saw a lot of resistance at that 2930 level and today we gapped down we tried to fight you know, up earlier in the day today, we tried to come back, but we pretty much hit a lower high from yesterday's high at about 29.28, or one of the highs from yesterday, and we downtrended for the rest of the day from there, and you can clearly see here, guys, we're dumping pretty aggressively here, heading into the last couple of minutes of the session on the 20th of August, which is today, and if we go to the longer term chart very quickly, let me just quickly clear this so we can draw um, the support and resistance tools or uh, the support and resistance levels together using the handy dandy tool that I always use here you can clearly see guys you know that 2930 level was roughly a resistance I guess you can say 2930 to 2950 was a resistance from back a couple of months ago in April right also you know that was a support level back in June we popped to all time highs there and obviously when we broke that support obviously we made it a resistance again we hit that double top now a triple top right under that spot. So now that it does seem like the S&P is falling, right, we might be seeing some lower levels here. So I want to illustrate some supports for you guys right here. And the first one you can see is $2,900, which is literally where we are right now. That's a support that we're currently holding above. And there goes the market. We close literally at $2,900. I'm interested to see, you know, are we going to hold this tomorrow? Are we going to dump below? That's going going to give us indication on where the market, especially the S&P, which is the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the United States, it'll give us the indication of where it could be headed, right? So if we break 2,900, we may be going down to, let's say, 2,850, right? That's a level that you guys can see here. That was a resistance back in March of 2019. We broke that, making it a support, and then we dumped below it again, making it a resistance back here in June. June, and that could be a spot that we could go to if we break 2900 a bit lower than that you guys can see 28 
10 roughly 2815 is another level of support right you can see we actually got roughly to that spot a couple of days ago 2830 ish 2820 a couple of weeks ago in the beginning of the month we got roughly to the same area again so honestly guys if we break into this 2800 level you know 20 you know 2800 ish we could be we could be going to 2850 2820 2800 flat and it could get very ugly if we start to break into 2700 you know we could be going down to 2730 right 2730 is a very strong level that's actually where we got to when we sold off in the month of may in 2019 so those are just a couple of levels that i'm watching here and on, on the flip side you know there's also a clear resistance under this 50 sma here we, we struggled on three separate occasions there forming that triple top if we go a bit closer here on the 20 day you can see under the 180 sma there's also a resistance on this hourly chart here. If we break below the 50 SMA here, that's going to be another technical break that could bring further downside. Those are some things that I'm currently watching right now. If we go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you can see it's very similar, right? We got roughly a triple top here, more like a double top, and then a lower high here at about 26,150. We're trending below that 180 SMA here, which is the gold line on this hourly chart, looking very very, very bearish here, especially since we dumped and actually we're down about 0.66% today on today's session, right? We tried to fight to break out here. And if we were to break out of yesterday's highs, that would have been a pretty bullish move here on the intraday chart. We obviously failed to do that. We made lower lows from there, lower highs, and a pretty big dump here towards the end of the trading session. If we go out to the 184 hour chart very quickly, guys, you can see here the Dow is strong struggling very much to get above 26200. We got those three rejections there. Now it seems like we're we're starting to get back into the $25,000 level, guys, right? You can clearly see it. And if we break 25 900 or 26,000 flat, which honestly, we already are doing that as we did close below that level. You know, these are some levels we may be testing. We, we may be going to 25,850. We may be going down to 25,400. And the level we hit back in May, towards the end of that May sell off, heading into the beginning of June, we got down to $24,700, which if we draw and see how much of a percentage drop that is, that's about another 5% drop from where we currently are right now and you know with the way the market is right now we all know the inverted yield curve the trade war tensions you know with all of these different things that are going on you know the economy on the brink of a recession as a lot of people in the community have been talking about this could lead to more turmoil you know heading into the next couple of weeks and like you guys read in the title there is this one thing that I'm sure you guys can probably think of that is holding up the market right now that is kind of really pumping some optimism into the minds of investors and traders, which I personally think, and I'm sure a lot of you guys could agree, is a very short-term fix here, and that is the interest rate cuts, right? We got the interest rate cut back in July, and now the next meeting, you know, the next potential cut, which I honestly think we're going to see another cut, is going to be here in September. So these are short-term fixes, guys. Whether we get a 25 basis point rate cut, a 50 point basis uh, point rate cut, you know, that will take the market pretty positively, I, I personally think, right? The market will take that positively, whether it's a week, two weeks. But the thing is, guys, the market is doing this right now, or the Fed is doing this because the Fed knows that the economy is at the brink of a recession, it knows that it needs to put its foot down and start cutting these rates. So I'm viewing this as pretty negative in terms of you know a longer term outlook here on the economy. And it's really the only thing, one of the only things right now that's really giving hope to people out there. And I'm sure a lot of you guys could agree. Let me know down below in the comment section, what do you guys think about that? And if we go to the NASDAQ very quickly, you can see we're dumping even further right now. These are the futures. We're down 
down about 0.8% right now. And notice how, you know, we're seeing a double top here on the NASDAQ, resistance under that 180 SMA here on the 4-hour chart, right? We're noticing how if we do end up getting dump, uh, rejected here and start to dump down, the next support that we're looking at here is about 100 points lower from where we are now at about 7,570, right? That's a very strong spot. We actually had, um, you know, a couple different times, a point in times in the past where we got rejected at that point, right? 7550. We got one rejection back in March, another rejection back in May, another rejection back in June. And once we broke out of that level, obviously it became a new support. We double bottomed at that point, or actually, no, not at that point. Uh, we got a bit of a support here back in the middle of August, a couple of days ago, we popped up. But now that we're seeing that resistance I just talked about under that 180 SMA here on the four hour chart, I'm thinking we may be re retesting 7550. And if we break that, you know, 7430 may be coming up, 7260, roughly 73. 300 may be coming up and if we see here the end of may right we got that big sell-off in the month of may and the end of may is where we kind of bottomed out here on the nasdaq just like the s p and the dow that level was at about seven thousand dollars which is 600 points lower from where we are right now so if the markets get rocky we start to break these uh, key levels of support you know seven thousand may be coming on the nasdaq but that is a far bit away here guys we do have to start breaking these levels first before even considering us getting down here, but I'm just looking and planning these support and resistance levels to kind of get an idea of where we could be headed. So that's kind of it right now, guys. The markets took the dump like I did expect, and like I mentioned in yesterday's video, really the rate cuts at this point, you know, Jerome Powell and is really looking to do it. I really do believe the Fed is going to cut rates. We don't know 100%, but I'm I could tell you off my opinion, there's like a 70, 80, 90% chance that their rates are going to be cut here. Trump obviously wants them. He's pushing for them. And really, the, the whole economy right now in the stock market, I believe, is kind of hoping for that for really higher stock prices at this point because we all saw when we got the uh, the uh, the news a couple weeks ago, months ago, whenever that was that the Fed was going to cut the rates, the market was pricing that in so heavily, it pumped up the market up to all-time highs. The S&P hit 30, 25, and once that rate cut came, the markets dropped. We got the tariff news, the markets dropped after that. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe maybe we go up a bit here you know, if the if the markets do cut the rates, and who knows, guys, maybe the market doesn't react to the rate cuts. I would love to know what you guys have to think, because the truth is, no one really knows how the market's going to react and what is going to happen until it does happen, right? So let's just transition into what I ended up doing today. Today was a good trading day for me, to be completely honest with you guys. Yesterday, I actually didn't trade because I did see the overall market gapped up and kind of saw a resistance at that level that we talked about in yesterday's video, which was on the uh, S&P at about 2930. So I figured I want to keep it safe, not trade or play it safe, rather not trade and wait for the opportunities to potentially open up uh, tomorrow, which was today, right? That's what I was saying yesterday. And LABD was one of the uh, ETFs that I talked about in yesterday's video, do you guys remember that? The biotechnology ETF. This is actually the bear ETF. And this one trades based upon SPS IBI. For those of you guys that watched yesterday's video, you probably recall this, right? This is a, a biotechnology index. Whenever this index is selling off, right? LABD is going up at a 3x rate. And the whole kind of... Uh, strategy behind this trade was, you know, the markets were up for those two days, right? We saw the markets were up for those two days. And I was thinking to myself, you know, we're seeing a bit of a resistance on the S&P typically, not always, but typically when the overall markets do poorly, you know, SPS, IBI, the index, this index right here does poorly as well. So if we look on a technical basis, this index was trading right under the 50 SMA, right under that 180 SMA on the four hour chart where over the past couple of uh, really months, 
every time it's gone to that point, it's gotten rejected. So with my personal analysis, I saw the markets topping off the triple top on the S&P. I figured, okay, if the markets gap down a bit and start to push down, this could end up dragging down the S&P biotechnology index, and I could end up getting a good position in on LABD for a potential day trade. And guess what happened, guys? That that exactly happened, right? Exactly that is what happened. And, you know, a lot of the times these, um, you know, the way you want it to happen doesn't always happen, right? The way you plan it does not always happen pan out. It doesn't always play out according to plan, but today was one of those days where it ended up playing out perfectly, right? Take a look at what happened here. So yesterday, topped off at 6,500 on the index. We gapped down heavily today, which kind of gave me the idea of we may be seeing red today. We may be seeing red today. The futures were red as well in terms of the overall markets. We pumped up here. This is when the markets tried to go on that rally, but got rejected as well. And once we started to dump here, this started to give me, you know, kind of an incentive to get into LABD, which goes up whenever this index is going down, right? And if we just look, on the 20 day very quickly 20 day one hour take a look guys and we talked about this time frame yesterday as well I talked about how you know if we did get rejected by the 180 SMA this would be a huge play on LABD well we got rejected by that 180 SMA guys we started to push down pretty aggressively and that really just gave me the go ahead on LABD to start building a little position and this was a pretty um not really a quick trade I did hold it for about two hours today and I really got in after this dip. Not right here. That would have been perfect, guys, right, if I timed it perfectly. But at this point, you have to understand, in real time, we don't know that it's going to bottom off here, right? I wanted to see if it was going to hold and then pop pull back and maybe hold a higher low. And that's exactly what ended up happening, right? So I didn't pull the trigger right here. That would have been the perfect entry point, right? But I ended up waiting a bit after, right? I ended up waiting a bit after as we started to pump up, right? As we started to pump up and ride that 50 SMA, I pretty much played it on, I believe it was this pullback right here. We pulled back nicely, 2050. We started to hold that 50 SMA. We started to ride it up. And as we broke that pop pre-market, or rather once the market opened at about 2060, that's when I started, <coughs> excuse me, scaling into the position here on LABD. And it wasn't a crazy profit, right? It wasn't a crazy move. You know, I got in roughly right here and I sold out after we started to break up above 2090. So overall, it was about a 0.8 to 1% move here. Obviously, guys, if I were to get in at 2016, right, you're probably like, Stas, why didn't you get in a bit earlier? Well, I'm a really conservative trader, guys. I don't like, um, you know, getting in too early, if that makes any sense. So I didn't get in here. You know, that would have been a 3 4% move, but I played it safe and I got about a point eight to one percent move there on labd and you guys can see it's spiking up here after hours as well i'm sure the index is falling even more and you guys can see the markets um you know uh, uh the uh, e, uh the es the e-mini the nasdaq futures those are continuing to drop you know as i'm recording this video so that's honestly all i ended up doing today guys i traded labd very quick um in and out here it was about an hour two hour hold something like that and that's what I, that's all I did, guys. I would love to know what you guys ended up doing today in the markets. If you would like to share, drop that comment down below. And now, very quickly, let's get into some stocks that I'm personally watching and stocks that haven't been talked about a lot by me especially, and I haven't really been hearing a lot about these stocks, and these are the marijuana stocks, guys. I kind of want to talk about two in particular here, CGC and CGC here. It's actually a stock that is getting to very interesting levels. If we take that support tool out very quickly, you guys can see that CGC right now is actually approaching $25 where it ended up bottoming out once about a year ago back in July in 2018. It bottomed out there again back in December of 2018. And now we're starting to approach that level again. We're at $27 now. We're starting to get to that $25 
dollar level of support. And just to give you guys a clearer picture, you know, CGC, Canopy Growth Company, for those of you guys who don't know, this has been downtrending like crazy over the past couple of months. We hit the high at about $52. We've been getting rejected by that 50 SMA. We got the bearish cross. The 180 SMA has been acting as a resistance. All of these negative signs, negative technicals pointing to more downside have been developing, right? And every time, though, you have to realize that every time, you know, a piece of news comes out, positive news, maybe earnings, right? Or whenever we get a technical break and some hype is built around these stocks, they go crazy, right? Take a look at this other time that we got to $25, which again is why I'm watching CGC right now. Let's say, you know, we get to this point and we pop up again. This could be due for a massive run, guys. We can literally double our money if we get to 25 and then run back up to the 50s, right? Which is why I'm really, really interested in just keeping an eye on it, although it's still on a downtrend once and if it breaks out, it could offer huge profits. Take a look back here a couple of months ago, like I just said, but I got a bit sidetracked. $25, we broke out of that 50 SMA, and then from there, it's like a rocket ship, guys. Literally, in the month of January, from about the 4th of January all the way to the end of January, this stock went from $30 per share, $28, $30 per share, all the way up to $51 per share. That is absolutely ridiculous. Then we hit that resistance, sold off a bit, had another good run back up to the resistance, and now we're selling off. We've been selling off aggressively over these past couple of months. So guys, you know, this is just one to keep on your radar. I'm for sure keeping an eye on it because, again, like I said, when these marijuana stocks get hot, they get really hot and they do very well. And I'm going to be waiting on the sidelines for that technical break to see if we get it, and then I'm going to capitalize on that. Another one that's been hot in the past but has gotten crushed is Kronos Group, ticker symbol C-R-O-N. And take a look at this, guys. We hit $25 roughly in that same time period as uh, you know, CGC, the marijuana industry, the marijuana stocks in general were doing very well at this particular time period. And since then, we've shaved off over a hundred or, uh, you know, more than a hundred percent. You know, the stocks lost its value, right? You know, over the past couple of months, a lot, you know, from 25 down to about $11 here. And we can see, you know, on this three-year, one-week chart, notice how we're approaching old levels of resistance at about 11 to $12. So I'm interested in seeing, are we going to pop and hold above these levels here as new supports, maybe fill the gap back up to $15? If we break 15, that could be a pretty bullish move there back up to the 20s. This is what I'm watching for um, Kronos here. You know, another one that I'm personally watching um, is natural gas, right? We talked about natural gas a lot, you know, over the past couple of videos. Natural gas at this point in time, it did pretty well today. It was up about 0.4%. If we go to the 20-day, one-hour chart, you guys can see ever since we've bottomed out at about 202, we've been reversing in price. The price action has been showing us a bit of a bullish move, right? We've been breaking out of moving average resistances. We've been seeing the bullish cross. We've been holding the moving averages as supports instead of getting rejected by them as resistance levels. This is looking pretty good to me, but one thing that I want to see here now is a four-hour break above, uh, on the four-hour chart, a break above that 180 SMA. I think if we get that, that's going to be a very bullish move here. And especially now that we're headed towards, you know, the colder seasons, natural gas typically does well in the winter months here in the United States. So I'm really interested in seeing how this does end up playing out. And of course, we trade you guys and D guys on, or I personally traded. I'm sure a lot of you guys traded as well. If you do follow, um, you know, the, the natural gas, uh, yeah, you know, futures here and, and ETFs that trade based upon it. And this one goes up whenever natural gas is going up, right? So this could offer for a lot of potential over these next couple of weeks and months as and if natural gas does end up popping 
up. So, guys, that's pretty much it, right? The marijuana stocks, natural gas, LABD. I'm watching that one again for tomorrow just in case the markets dump again, right? It's very, very possible the markets continue to run down. And let's say the markets dump and break 2900 on the S&P, which I think is very, very possible. You know, SPXS, which goes up whenever the S&P is selling off at a 3x rate, you know, this could be a very good play here on a technical basis. Is, you know, we're seeing a bit of a, a, a bullish move here. The triple bottom, we're starting to pop up. This can very well fill the gap up to $20.50, which offers about a 7, 8, 9% margin of profit. You know, a lot of the large caps right now, a lot of the large caps right now, which is why I'm staying away from them, they're not looking attractive, right? Facebook was looking decent, you know, on the Sunday video that I recorded, but it's still, it's really still getting rejected by the resistance here of this wedge. We're not getting the breakout that we want, so I'm not going to trade that one, right? You know, Amazon's another one that's not looking too good right now. We're seeing a bit of a resistance at about 18.25. If we break the 50 SMA, that's going to be very, very ugly in my opinion. I guess Apple's the only one that you can make an argument about right now, but either way, Apple's overbought at this point, in my opinion. It would need to see a pullback at least to 205 to retest before me even considering a position, and then again, I'd rather just place some of these inverse ETFs and market ETFs that I do have listed right here on my watch list, right? Microsoft is another one that's Eh, you know, it's looking not really good at all, to be honest. You know, we can see this one's also in a bit of a wedge here. You know, if this breaks out, this could run up to 140 for sure, right? But if we get up, uh, end up getting rejected, we start to push down to 134 and we break, that could be a very bearish move. So these are just a couple that I'm personally watching as well as drip. Let me throw this one in as well because it didn't really play out accordingly to what I thought it would in yesterday's video, but we have to give it some more time. It didn't break the pattern that I talked about, right? For those of you guys that didn't watch that, I talked about how we may hold, you know, this higher low here at about 95.97. We didn't necessarily break that pattern by, you know, selling off further. We simply consolidated, right? So this could definitely pop up tomorrow, which would give it a huge margin of profit if it does end up getting back to 100, 110, 115, 120. There's about 20% margin of profit on drip. So that's it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me and drop a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the market right now. I would love to know. And if you want to be further connected with our community, the Strive Smart community, the Facebook group is linked down below, the Discord group chat's linked down below, and my personal Instagram as well as the Strive Smart Instagram is linked down below as well, same as the Twitter. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Appreciate every single one of you guys. Peace out.